Greetings, open source friends. Open source program manager Brian here. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, today we're going to be discussing Project Silva. You know, you may remember the launch of Project Silva from last November when the project announced its plans to create an open source telecommunications community on GitLab. Today, we're checking in with the project to learn a little bit more uh, about it, see uh, how it's doing, see how its work is progressing, uh, and to learn how you can get involved in this uh, really great and important project. Joining me today is Andre Vieira, Silvia's uh, of Project Silva, rather, uh, communications lead. Andre, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Ryan, and to introduce here Project Silva to the GitLab community. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's let's dive in and, and start right at the beginning in case this is the first time that folks are you know hearing about Project Silva. They missed the announcement last November. Um, describe it for us. Summarize what it is and, and what it does uh, and, and explain maybe a little bit why it's important, why we need uh, this project. Well, um, Project Silva begins with a pain that uh, it was appearing in the in Telco Cloud and the Edge. So in this ecosystem, um, and it still is a very solid approach. So in the historical model with the multi-vendor and ecosystems with uh, telcos and size and so on, it will creating mini Telco Clouds within the, the telecom operators. Um, and also in terms of security, it has some issues because it, it was in in the initial stage. I'm from Portugal. Last year in Portugal, um, we had an attack in Vodafone, a very serious attack. Um, and this this is being a pain also in the in the telecom operators. Also, the shift as um, we are, we were having in terms of uh, network functions. So the, the things that that in the, in the operator makes you to do a call or to have mobile data. These are changing. These were physical hardware. They passed to virtual machines. Now they are containerized. And this, this, uh, this journey is not easy. Um, and this bit not easy. And, and a lot of pains appeared with, with the journey with companies uh, such as telecom operators that has more than 100 years. And uh, the lack of automation with all of these, um, it's uh, difficult to do automation again with companies that uh, are very old, with need, needs to deal with the legacy. Um, and all these pains um, were tackled and, and were thought by the main carriers in Europe, um, but also some network providers. So they gathered. It, it was a, a very good approach because everyone gathered on, on the same issue. And um, they created Project Silva under the Linux Foundation last November, as you said, um, to address these telco and edge use cases. The project's objectives are very clear what we want to address. So we we cannot save the world, but we want to address two very specific problems. And the first one is to release a cloud software framework to the telco, but also to the edge requirements to address this uh, technical challenge of the industry layer of this ecosystem. But also the second objective is to develop a reference implementation cloud software framework to create the validation program. So everything that goes on top of this framework needs to be validated to create the what we call the homogenization of the cloud. Um, and this project will not only bring benefits for the telecom operators. This is this is very important in terms of ecosystem and to bring new people to, to this world. As telecom operators, of course, this has the the benefits that are clear to reduce the costs, that things will be more homogeneous, the, the time to market, so new services that everyone hears about, the, the 5G, the 6G that is going to appear will be quicker. Uh, we will have better services, the time to market, to, we'll have less issues. But also in terms of the network functions providers, so they can do the build once, deploy many. Um, they will reduce the costs to release new software. But also, this can bring um, new players to to the, this ecosystem. This was for for some kind of network function providers. This can bring new people. And in the 5G, there is some interesting network functions that are containerized. That that is analytics, and this open completely the the ecosystem to any developer that wants to 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 have an idea and to communicate, but also to explore the functionalities that the network has for very cool um, very cool apps. 
for the system integrators that I'm myself, I'm a system integrator. I work in a company that is self-focused, that is a system integrator. It's great for us because it's also a good business opportunity because we can do the, the certification of these. Um, we can also create the distribution of silver and to, to support the deployment of, of, of the operators and everyone being as an expert. For the hardware and info providers is the to have this, obtain this information of a telco grade. So everyone or any hardware or info provider can be validated on Silva and can act to, to, to have a, to, to work for the operators or also for the edge. Um, what is really important. Also, we see the telco cloud and edge ecosystem to evolve. So in terms of technology, um, this we were having and seeing with the, before Silva a slow, innovation, but with the open source, and we all know with the open source opening to everyone, this will um, uh, create more innovation, will open to more ideas. The more ideas we have, more innovation we will, we will bring. In terms of business, of course, in terms of proprietary uh, solutions and lock-in, this will open and will be a more open uh, ecosystem and cheaper. And in terms of regulation and security, this is also very important because this will have the backup of everyone, firstly here in Europe, and we hope also to, to the world, to be to not have issues in terms of regulations. This is very, uh, very known in the industry that the operator has a strong regulation, and we need to have, because the security and our data, everyone has the data in the mobile phone. So it, it needs to be regulated, needs to be secure. But this is important because we know on this ecosystem, there will be a regulation. It will be certified in terms of regulation. It will be certified in terms of security. So to wrap up all of these, in a nutshell, the leading carriers in Europe are bringing and are working with these. So um, now they have more than 12 contributors since November. The ecosystem have grown a lot um, from network vendors, um, from uh, system integrators, other vendors. People outside of Telco, they are participating and it's great to release this cloud software and the, and the validation center. Um, but this innovation is possible uh, because of the network openness and fostered by the 5G. Um, every developer, and this is important, can have the next big idea with, with this. And, and we want to promote like WhatsApp and Uber appear in 4G and, and, and mobile data availability. So when these appeared, new ideas appeared. Here, Silva wants to foster also that. Um, and in 5G, we are not only connected. So, so 4G brings us the connectivity. 5G will bring more, will be, bring the connected experience, will bring a, a new layer, a new, a new way to interact uh, uh, between each other. So Silva is the fundamental step for this to happen. And we wanted to, 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 to make this happen, to create this ecosystem of innovation, and of course, to create an, this layer, this framework, to be possible for everyone to have more ideas and, and to change the world for a better place, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that's a, a great summary. I really appreciate that. And it's it's an exciting it's an exciting chapter and it's an exciting project. Uh, and it's exciting to see the telco industry get involved. It's a it's a it represents a, a fairly common story. I think we see in open source in other industries, right? Where where you know major players realize, hey, uh, you know, we, we we can gain a lot if we share, right? Instead of everybody exactly. reinventing <laughs> their own wheel, right? And why don't we open up our non-differentiating software, the stuff that we all need that was not, you know, uh, real business driving, you know, stuff for us, uh, share, build a common platform, um, a common set of protocols that we can all build on top of and provide different differentiating value generating, um, you know, activity. Um, and we actually win uh, that way, right? By sharing and collaborating yes. on a common infrastructure, we can, all, we can actually uh, not only do business uh, better, but we can innovate faster, as you said, right? We open the, we open the, a space for uh, new ideas, right? To, to come faster, because we're not all working on sort of keeping the lights on, we're sharing that that load, right? So it's a common uh, scenario and it's just really exciting to see the the telcos that you mentioned uh, get involved. So that's uh, a relatively new project. Um, and what have you, what have, have all the members uh, accomplished so far? So it's um, relatively new and um, 
So it's, yeah, as I said, started in November and um, there was a great collaboration. So in terms of uh, collaboration, as, as I, we said, as I was saying, um, there are a lot of companies contributing to this. It's not only the operators and not only the, the initial uh, people, a lot of people are contributing. So this, this uh, enabled for to ramp up and to have um, to have outstanding results um, since uh, since now from from the release that to, from June 2022 because the project was having some some developments uh, before November um, to now so we we integrated uh, a lot of use cases so we tested for the open RAN CNFs um, open RAN is the openness of the RAN uh, of the RAN part so it was a, a really black box for the operators now it's been and uh, distributed, and we already tested these uh, these uh, containerized network functions. Um, we opened also to test it with uh, the 5G core, mm -hmm. some applications on the 5G core. Uh, that is the mobility, that is the first one that is going to see, to make your calls see the, and having your location and knowing all that stuff. Um, also in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of free 5G core that was also tested, that is important to see also other open projects, but also in terms of security that we had a lot of features, um, the central authentication um, that we implemented and the, the PKI integration um, and the conformity evaluation. In terms of Kubernetes distribution, uh, we have the RKE and RKE2 and containers vanilla and, uh, and RKE2. In terms of performance, it's the SRIOV and DPDK, and in terms of storage, also we have the longer. And in terms of automation, we already have the script to deploy the multi-cluster Kubernetes management in Rancher, in bare metal and bare metal automation. Um, we also have the deployment model in the container as a service and reference architecture for the Linux Foundation architecture. And in terms of testing, we also have with the Kubernetes Anuket X testing and the deployment with the container as a service in bare metal uh, and and also in the vSphere and OpenStack. So it's it's a lot for for uh, November. Um, the project is also growing. We want also to to have a, a strong bet to see in terms of, of applications of how Silver will be on top, if it's going to be on the bare metal, to be on top on VMware. Mm -hmm. So we want for this to be the most heterogeneous possible, but also to bring the network functions and test the network functions for, for the 5G core mm -hmm. um, to to begin to have this validation. So people to begin to use it and to do to do some kind of POCs. And some POCs are appearing with this. Some cool POCs are appearing in, in terms of mobile private networks that is being used for this. Um, for cool use cases, but um, first we need to test it. We need to see if, if the automation is done. Um, but uh, we had right now the first production ready um, last month, and we want now to, to begin to test it, to do some pox and to, to have more people to test it. Mm -hmm. um, but until now, it's a, it's a very cool uh, um, innovation and very yeah. fast. So we are, yes. we are proceeding and congrats to, to the team. Uh, I, I can do it now. Congrats to the team because this is being amazing. And the more yeah. people that join these projects, again, I'm doing some advertising. The more people that go, goes to this ecosystem, the better and the better that the faster that we can uh, deploy more, more things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yes. And, and congratulations to everybody who, who is involved or what can you, you know, who are some of your major contributors and participants in, in so, so right now we have, we, we divided these in the, in working groups, uh, as we call it. Okay. Um, and the major participants on the, on the working groups, we have the telco cloud stack mm -hmm. that is being led by Matthew, by, in or, by orange. The validation center that is uh, being led by Luis from Telefonica. The security is Theophil from Orange e, and the energy efficiency by Nokia. And then with the communication and adoption is myself from Cellfocus and the governance also Theophil from, from Orange. These are the main people in the, in the project. Uh, then we had a lot of contributors. There is, uh, um, there is Wind River, there, there is... Um, um, also, uh, uh, Huawei that uh, that is participating, HP, Varnish, uh, Capgemini, Suze, WeaveWorks, Intel, Wikinix, Dell, Lenovo, 
and followers such as British Telecom, Avenir, Juniper, Red Hat, um, and Airbus. So it's 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 a big ecosystem right now. We are yeah, really happy. Wow. But the more people that want to join, we are very happy to join us. Uh, it's it's not ever enough uh, of participants of, of this kind of projects. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Wow. A lot of names there. Um, mm -hmm. So let, let's just, you know, you've, you've had some great accomplishments in a seemingly short amount of time. What surprised you most about this kind of work, specifically about you know, kind of taking this particular approach, you know, this is sort of a, a more innovative approach for work in a, in an, you know, older industry like telecommunications. What surprised you most about doing this kind of work in the open? Well, I think you replied a bit in your question is to be <laughs> on the telecom operators ecosystem. So this kind of stuff normally are very closed. And for many years, um, operators were very closed and to, did their own developments, their own requirements. If you were a vendor to talk with an operator and talk to another one, it was a completely different world. Yeah. And uh, I think the most surprising right now is the cooperation and the cooperation for everyone. So everyone is working with the same goal. Um, this will not prejudice their, in terms of business case, this will enhance. And, and I think to have this click on the industry to say, together we go further, I think it's amazing. I think in terms of, of, of uh, the thing that surprised me the most was that, and and it's good to see how everyone is cooperating. So normally people are very suspicious in, this, in, in the projects, not uh, sharing, but we understand that sharing will improve the innovation. The people that are also participating will improve, will increase their knowledge. Um, and this was not normal in this, in this kind of industry. And this by far is what surprised me the most on yeah. the work that is being done right now. So we work really as a team. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, we, we have our companies, but we work as a team. And this is great. This is being great. And I think this is one of the major things of, of our our results that, that we are having. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, and then, you know, to follow that up, what about challenges? You know, obviously there's a long road ahead for your roadmap. Um, what What are the things that you're facing right now that, are you think are going to be the biggest challenges for the the ecosystem and and for the the community um, mm -hmm. in the months and years ahead? So the challenge to identify and as I think is in terms of adoption and okay. in in terms of the the way that is cooperating with other open source projects. So the adoption is really important in this kind of project until it's it's really new. So it needs to get adopted. If mm -hmm. it doesn't get adopted, of course, this project normally tends to 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 vanish or to disappear. Um, but um, the main challenge is how to to adopt to to begin to, to do some pox because it it has some it takes some time. Mm -hmm. um, but also to to do and the, the main challenge is how we cooperate with other projects because other projects might say, I am already doing this and we don't want to reinvent the wheel. If someone is doing that, we are going to take the synergies for these, these projects. And the Linux Foundation has a lot of projects mm -hmm. that we can benefit. Um, the latest one is Nephew that uh, that we are co collaborating. Anuket, we are also collaborating. So we don't want to overlap. And mm -hmm. these are the main challenge because normally we, we know our project and for instance, I. I we don't know in detail the other projects and we need to collaborate. This sometimes is the, the alignment uh, that needs to, to be done. But I think it's normal in the beginning. Also, the other people don't know really well Silver. They they have a, the high level idea. So the main challenge right now is to explain to everyone in the community for the Linux Foundation, for the operators, to see this is how it works. And of course, to adapt um, because the industry and the world also adapts, so it, it evolves. So we need to, to evolve and to adapt in, in this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So the main challenge, I think, is this to the first, the adoption, to set some adoption and to, to put this on production um, in an operator uh, that is being done, uh, by the way. And the other is how, how do we coexist in the ecosystem? We don't want to occupy any space. We want to, we have our space cleared and we want to benefit in the ecosystem with the other projects. I think they, these are the two main challenges. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great, great. Well, where can, you know, where can, you're open, you're open source, uh, you are accepting contributions, you yourself just said you welcome new participants. Where can people learn more about Project Silva? Um, 
And most importantly, if they want to contribute, uh, where can they go and how can they do it? Sure. So it's very simple. It's on GitLab. <laughs> People can go on gitlab.com. And the project is uh, Silva uh, dash projects. Um, and you can find it. You have all the information there. And then, of course, if you have more information, you have there the emails to, to send it and to begin the participation. The meetings occur in every two weeks, so two times per month. Um, and uh, everyone can participate, can enter on, on the call, and, uh, and then to hear about, to see the status, and begin to participate. That's the same way that I begin to participate in this project. I, I saw it on, on, on LinkedIn, the advertising. I went to the GitLab page. I read the paper and I said, this is an amazing project. I want to participate. I went to a meeting and then here I am. After six right. months, <laughs> I'm also here. Yeah, yeah. So all your meeting notes are open, your meeting you know, invitation yes, is open. Yes, it's open. Any... Yes, but any issue that you have, you have there the emails, you have all the information there. Um, so it's it's very straightforward. Great. Well, Andre, I really I appreciate your time today, and I, I I hope you won't mind us following up with you in a couple more months to see how things are continuing. I wish you luck. I wish the community luck. Is there anything else you want to tell our viewers today about Project Silva? No, uh, I want to thank you for for the time today, and I just want to say our punchline that is always a, a silver lining in every cloud. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right. <laughs> thanks so much, Andre. And Thank you. Watching at home. Thanks again for, for joining us today to learn more about Project Silva. We'll see you next time.